All right, we're gonna. I think we're gonna get started. Welcome everybody. Good to have. Uh, we got uh, 46 people in climbing in the Zoom room, and uh, got some on Facebook. I don't have that up right now, but I know we're streaming live there. Uh, Y'all, it's good to have you. A little housekeeping. My name's Travis Martin. I've lost over 100 pounds on the program. Come off all prescription medications. All I know to do is bow my unworthy head and give Jesus the praise for it all. Uh, I can't make myself get up in the morning. If it, if it ain't for the Holy Spirit, I don't have any motivation. I don't have, so I want to encourage everybody. If you feel like your problem is you're not motivated, all you need to do is find you a little prayer closet and talk to God. Have a little talk with God. God's the one that motivates us. God's the one that gives us enthusiasm to keep going forward, keep moving forward. And I, I'll throw this at you too. I, I talked to somebody today and they so down on themselves. I get that. That resonates with me. That's the devil. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. It, it's really a radical, uh, a radical thought. Forgive yourself. It's okay. Yesterday's gone. What we do have is today. So let's make the most of today. So if you're a new member, you're in good hands today. We're going we're gonna to do our best to help you. This isn't like anything you've ever done before. We're only after one thing, and that is to help you live an abundant life in Christ to accomplish what you want to accomplish with this program. Some folks don't want to lose weight. Uh, I, I talk to people every day, Karen. They say, well, I got to lose weight. I say, you don't want to? Well, not really, but I got to. You want, you're not going to do it then. People don't right. do anything that they, that they ain't got to do or they don't want to do. I wanted to do this. Yes. I want people to realize that if you don't want to do this, just love yourself where you are. Now, for me, that, that was tough because I felt like God required a lot more of me than I was showing. You know, God wanted me to live up to more of my potential than to sit there on my 300, my 300 pound big end and just give up. But if I could have loved myself that way, fine. I just couldn't. It, I just, I had an unction to do better. And, and the reason being, there's a lot more to enjoy li uh, about life than just food. So y'all, if you're new here, start this process off loving yourself, seeing yourself as Christ sees you. And this will be so much more fun. It won't be such a hardship. And by the way, for all those that say it's so hard, what is hard about eating three delicious meals a day and losing weight? It just doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, we're glad you're with us. Come go with us. I've got my good friend, Karen Klein. She has really just started the program and her results have been amazing. And what we're going to do the first half of this Q&A session is we're going to be looking at Karen's journal. She has uh, been very vulnerable and, and is allowing us uh, to look at her journal, allowing all of you to look at her journal. And I'm going to see if I can find any way to give her any tips or anything that can help her go faster. But I don't know how she can go much faster. Karen, do you, do you want to share a little bit about yourself and uh, where you come from, how you got yeah. started with this program? Sure. Um, I, um, I live near Travis's mother, Gail. She's one of my most dear friends. And so um, I'd been following her on Facebook and saw where she was posting this delicious food. And I thought, I've just got to try this because I had tried Thrive. I'd, I'd done Thrive back years ago. So um, <clears throat> I've got to give a shout out to Gail because she has been such a huge help for me. It's like I've got her on speed dial. <laughs> Thank you for not blocking me, Gail, because <laughs> I've worn her out. We've gone to lunch numerous times. She's given me recipes and ideas, but but I started, I actually joined on February 13th, which is six weeks ago. Um, I started the fast track, which I have, like you tell everybody, that's the best thing you can do. And um, I, the first week I was watching the fast tracks and trying to get a feel for what foods I like. You know, I chose my foods, made some meal ideas. So I wasn't sit real, really into it until the 21st, which was five weeks ago. Um, I've lost 16 pounds Ooh. since then and 10 inches. And I, I have pretty much stuck to the red column, maybe a little bit in the yellow. Um, my husband and I eat out all the time. So I'm telling you, you can do it and eat out because we eat out probably once a day. Um, but 
I have had no heartburn. And I mean, I was taking a prescription drug, <laughs> plus I was taking um, Tums. I would eat probably four or five Tums a day. It was like every time I ate, I had to have a Tums. So no heartburn. Um, and I kept it simple. I, you know, I, I found foods that I liked and just stuck with those. I thought, okay, I'm going to have, you know, basically I had two or three options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so I just kind of rotated them and um, kept doing the fast track. I, I finished my phase one. I just finished that, um, took the test. So um, I'm just, I'm enjoying it and I don't feel deprived at all. I really don't. Um, but I, ha I have been pretty restrictive on it. I'll, you know, I will say that, but 16 pounds in five weeks. And you know, the thing about it, like this week when I weighed this morning, I had lost almost three pounds and I'm within less than three pounds of my goal. So I wasn't uh -huh. expecting to lose that much because, you know, you said the closer you get, the less you're going to lose. But I really have been trying to, um, you know, like I said, kind of restrict it. But I don't feel deprived because I'm still kind of like the Mighty Muffins. Oh, my gosh. I love, you'll see them in my journal. I made them out of cook. I made cookies out of them. They look it, good. I seen you. Oh, they that. were delicious. I'm like, this is, I felt like I was cheating. <laughs> yeah. And, and you may not like. <laughs> what I'm about to say, um, you may not like this or you may have already had it, but one of the things I love with a mighty muffin when I'm having it as a dessert or a meal mm -hmm. is I'll, I'll take a, a peanut butter or the double chocolate one. And I'll add those sugar-free chocolate chips from, I think it's Lily's Lily's sugar-free. Oh, oh yeah. I like Lily's. Boy, that's so good. <laughs> little whipped yeah. cream on top. <laughs> right. But yeah. That's a good one. And just to break this down for y'all, I've got Karen's numbers here. And when we think of this type of weight loss, we're usually thinking of somebody who's got significant amount, uh, significant amounts of weight to lose. And that's why they lose it so fast. Like myself, I was over 300. So I lost it very fast in the beginning. Karen didn't have tons of weight to lose, right? right. First week, 5.3. Mm -hmm. second week and mom mom and i are always talking about how disciplined we knew you would be <laughs> 5.3 first week 3.4 the second week the next week your third week 4.7 and then the fourth week 2.7 mm -hmm. this is tremendous y'all i want you what karen has accomplished and what i've accomplished you can accomplish too it's a decision and as Karen says, she hasn't really felt deprived. Karen, other than Mighty Muffins, can you give us a, a few ideas of different types of meals you've had, some of your go-tos? Yes. Um, I love the uh, Sara Lee bread. And I know you're like, y'all love your bread, don't you? <laughs> me and your mom, me and Gail laugh about that because, yeah, we, we love our bread. But um, I like the French toast for breakfast. Um, the English muffins with the Canadian bacon, because when I looked and saw I could have three pieces of Canadian bacon, you know, the, the approved, the 97% fat free and, you know, slab of that fat free cheese and some egg whites or egg beaters. That's another go to for breakfast. Um, turkey, of course, I like the turkey wraps, um, cheese sandwich. I like the toasted cheese sandwich and the Hebrew national frames. I'm not a big hot dog person, but that has been one of my favorites so far. Um, so, and then now I'm kind of venturing out into the recipe since we're doing that 24 day challenge. Yeah. And that's something too, I'd like to encourage people if the closer you get, you know how you say the closer you get, the slower it is, you might want to consider doing a challenge like that because, you know, it's, it's more restrictive and it kind of keeps your, you know, your feet to the fire. Right. So, <laughs> but, and one thing I want to say, I didn't put on the list that I sent you, but in the middle of that, after the first two weight losses, the next week was the week before we started our challenge and I had not had a holiday. And I thought, Ooh, I better have a holiday. I don't know if I want to go 24 day, you know, which I know we can have them during the challenge, but I went ahead and I, I really, I had too many and I actually gained one pound that week. But then you can see, I was just like, I just, I didn't let it bother me. I thought, you know, yeah, I, I indulged a little bit too much, but one pound for a week. And then I was right back on track losing again. So. Yeah. That, so it, and that's the lifestyle It's uh, yeah. I, I tell people all the time, I mess up a lot more than somebody who messes up once and quits because yeah. I have, I have holidays, but I'm doing the right thing more than the wrong thing based yeah. upon how the program defines a perfect mm -hmm. day. You know, I know uh, I debated with somebody the other day, sometimes the, 
more educated somebody is in nutrition, the harder it is for them to do the program because they're like, well, if I have two perfect meals a day and one holiday meal per day and my calories are low, then uh, I should be fine because, you know, I'm doing the right thing more than the right. I said, no, you, you're misunderstanding how insulin works in your body. You have to keep those insulin levels abated. And when you do spike them, it's going to take two days. And then the argument is, well, I lost weight. The, the next day you lost water and sugar. You didn't lose fat. We have to have 24 to 25 perfect days a month to lose body fat efficiently. Once you go over six holidays a month, everybody, it starts slowing down. Once you get to 12, you're ultimately going to be plateauing and in maintenance. And that could be a little bit of a holiday or a big holiday. It's about insulin, calorie control, insulin control. Karen, you're nailing it. So when, you, when you've when you eaten out, when you've went out to eat, what, what kind of thing would you eat if you went out to a restaurant? Well, I usually try to get like the baked chicken. There's a restaurant that's one of our favorites. Um, your mom knows about it in Rome. You probably did Pico Deli in Rome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I get the, the baked chicken and they have, you know, vegetables. Of course, they don't use the the best stuff to, to season them with, but it hasn't affected my weight loss. Um, and we've gone to like, you know, Longhorn, Texas Roadhouse, and I got like the kids meal, you know, like the small steak and broccoli, that that kind oh. of thing. What what was the reason? Because you know, to me, uh, on the outside looking in, you've always looked great. You're <laughs> an overachiever, but something psychologically in your mind, in your heart, you said, "I'm not really satisfied where I'm at. I want to lose weight." What what was that all about? What was the the what caused you, other than seeing Mama's recipes or such, what caused you to say, "You know what? I need to do this. I want to do this." Yeah, well, I had the scale had kind of started creeping back up. And um, like you said, I was having more um, holidays than I should have had, which I didn't know what holiday was at, at that time. But I, I was cheating a little bit too much. And um, I'm just I'm real close to being 60 years old. I'm a, <laughs> and I thought I'm, I need to get a grip on this, you know, and um, and I wanted a lifestyle, something I could live with and not just like lose the weight. And then it come right back like. I've done so many times in the past. Yeah, and we're, we're about to look at your, uh, I know your faith and belief is a big, yeah. big thing to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about to look at your journal. Um, you didn't resist, it didn't, or maybe you did, but you did it anyway. You hadn't been too resistant to journaling. How, how much has that helped you that you spend a little time journaling each day? How, has that been a help? Oh, it's been a huge help. And actually, as a matter of fact, the week that I gained that pound, if you look at it, <laughs> you'll see I didn't journal that week. I, you know, I kind of hit or miss. And there were several days I didn't even go to my journal. And I think part of it was like I knew I wasn't doing good and I didn't want to accept reality of how how much I really had not done, you know, how bad I had done. So, so yeah, that, um, so that's a good testimony to, to journal it. And I found too, cause I started out on the app, but I've started using my iPad more now because it's like, you know, the things that you eat all the time, when you start type, like when I start typing turkey on a proved tortilla, it pops up and I eat this, you know, I put my lettuce and spinach and mustard on it. So it's, it's so easy, especially once you get it established, because it just kind of populates for, you know, it gives you the list of things that you eat all the time. So I found it to be real easy myself. Awesome. And you were mentioning, uh, I hear this a lot from, from clients uh, that even the, they'll journal like on a perfect day, but when they have a holiday, especially <laughs> back in the Thrive days, when it was, uh, I'm sorry, I'm pulling this up. Okay. When it was in the Thrive days, uh, I would we had paper journals, and uh, I'd just see on a holiday a big X. They wouldn't write nothing down, just a big, big X. And I'm like, that's the most important day to journal. Yeah, it is, because it's almost like if you don't write it down, it's like it didn't happen. I'm going right. to pretend like I didn't need all that. Exactly. And, and what changed for me was when I started being more thorough in my journal on a holiday than even on a perfect day because that's when you figure out what triggered me to do that right and what were the consequences of doing that and what would be the void replacement for doing that yeah. so and if i was craving ice cream and that's what got me because i was bored and i went to the freezer and i got out ice cream and mm -hmm. i ate 
shouldn't have eaten the ice cream or ate a whole bag of Cheetos. What can I do next time that that emotion's triggered? And then if I still had to have something, what is something that would control insulin that would taste the same? And that's how the program got built. So when we journal everyone on a holiday, it's, it's like the good stuff will take care of itself, mm -hmm. but the bad stuff never does. We have to face it and right. figure out what is the emotional trigger that caused that. So let's take a look. I think I've got yours up. Hey, now. Travis, one other thing I want to add about that. One thing that I did is I started uh, with Shibola that I had not really done in the past was because, you know, like I said, my faith is a huge part of who I, I mean, it's who I am. You know, it's kind of like you, you know, you can't not talk about the Lord. You can't not talk. That's, that's me. And if you don't like that, then I guess we can't be friends, right? That's right. <laughs> but, um, but one thing that I did do was I actually prayed. And, you know, and told God, it's like, I, I need help with this. And I just, you know, I, I, I prayed about it more than I had ever in the past. And I, and I think that was a huge thing, too. Yes, and I, I couldn't agree more yeah. in that without without the Lord, I honestly, I don't know what I would do. Uh, yeah. the, the people think I'm being disingenuous. I'm about as rotten as they come. Yeah. I, without the Lord, I can't stand myself. I can't stand to look at myself in the mirror. I'm rotten. Yeah. My flesh is like a runaway train, but in the Lord, in the Lord and your speech betrays you everywhere yeah. you go, Karen, your speech, like Peter, they said, mm -hmm. you know, Peter, you can't deny the Lord because your speech betrays you. That's right. It'll always tell on you. And I say this and it hurts feelings and I don't mean to. I'm talking about for me, when I was overweight, significantly overweight, my speech betrayed me. Mm -hmm. So here I am, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but I'm not acting like one. You know what I'm saying? A Christian yeah. is supposed to be a temperate, moderate, self-disciplined person who's still enjoying mm -hmm. the pleasures that are offered to us, but being enslaved by nothing. Yeah. So I was talking about the Lord all the time, but I'm over here enslaved to food. And I just love that when we turn to the Lord, when we pivot back to the Lord and we repent, mm -hmm. that's another thing that gets me in trouble in these classes. I tell people, just, you need to repent. That's not a bad thing. We all no. have to repent. And it, it has nothing to do with me going, I'm so sorry that I'm oh, I, I've enslaved and overindulging. <laughs> no, I don't even have to cry a tear. I just have to say, you know what? I'm not living like that no more. Yeah. I'm going to do an about. I was going this way. Now I'm going to turn. I'm going to go this way. Right. That's true. God's, yeah. God's right there waiting on you. He's yeah. right there. And you know, yeah. it reminds me, and you, I know everybody, if the Christians anyway, have, have heard how in, in sermons preachers will talk about, you know, I'm going to give this part to the Lord, but I don't want you, I'm going to keep this from, from I'm going to keep this and take control of this. And that's basically, I guess I, I felt conviction about that, that it's like, okay, I'm trying to keep, you know, I'm trying to keep a tight grip on this. It's like, I can handle this. I don't, I don't need your help. So um, I finally just turned it over to him and, and, um, you know, I needed, I need his help with everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, food addiction is one yeah. of those things. I, if we were talking about drug addiction, alcohol addiction, or some other vice, <laughs> people seem to get it. And they're like, we need to give that the Lord's the only one that can help us. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to food addiction, people do not want you meddling with their food. It, <laughs> no, <laughs> it, I, I mean, you, you never hear that preached about in the church. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> never, never. That's getting on people's toes. You don't do that. No, right. <laughs> uh, let's share this journal. Okay, mm -hmm. everybody, we, I know we've got some new folks here, just so you know what you're looking at. This is her calendar. You're so pretty, Karen. What a oh. beautiful <laughs> picture, profile picture. Well, thank you. But <laughs> Now, what's, what's jumping out at me here? Y'all can see that she's got five in a month. She's got five of these little uh, emojis taken off their suit, taken off his superhero mask. <laughs> in other words, she had a holiday one, two, three, four, five times and still lost the amount of weight that she's lost. <laughs> what I love about this is this isn't one of those extreme calendars that I've seen where somebody starts and they lock it down in the first holiday they have, they quit. I see that all the time. You would not believe behind the scenes in the admin side of the website, 
how many charts start off like Karen's. And then all of a sudden they have one holiday, they go on, they quit. This is how you live. This is balanced, moderate living. And she's got her efficient fat burning mode going here, had a holiday. Then she had a perfect day, but she had a couple, she had three holidays in a row. Then on Monday, she said, you know what? I'm getting back on it. This is how you live. This is how you do it. So let's just take a look. I'm going to jump right in here to about the ninth. So on the ninth, she marked a holiday. And I suspect she probably had more than Chili's fajitas that day, but she did what she was telling you. She quit journaling because she had a holiday. Because I was ashamed. <laughs> right. But th there's nothing wrong with having some Chili's fajitas. We're living life. We're celebrating life. There's nothing wrong, folks, with celebrating life, with food, enjoying yourself. If you have to be an extremist the rest of your life, you're not going to stick with it. That's what I love about Shibola. I love what the, the Apostle Paul said, and it's helped me more than anything. Every, I used to beat myself up over everything I did wrong. We're just not to be enslaved by anything. We have mm -hmm. liberties in Christ. So you had a great day. It's no big deal. It's part of the program. Now, if we go over six holidays in a month and our goal is to lose weight, not to maintain it, then we got to start buffeting our flesh like the Bible says. I, said, I forget if it was Paul or Peter said, I buffet my flesh. I don't buffet it. It was Paul. I said, I buffet my flesh. In other words, I'm going to be tough on myself now. I'm becoming a little enslaved to this thing. And you didn't do that. You haven't had more than six. You've reeled it back in. But just understand that once you, once you find yourself uh, having accidental holidays, you got to really take a look at that if they're not planned. So here's a day where your first episode, you had uh, apple cider vinegar with diet ocean spray. I do that myself. That's a, a free BR and extra. Then you had the approved French toast and egg whites, a great, great approved meal. You can have approved bread, baked chicken and cabbage and green beans at the Piccadilly. All right, y'all, <laughs> let's unpack this with her. Okay, I, this could be a trick question. Is, is that okay what she did, everybody? Can she have baked chicken, cabbage, and green beans at the Piccadilly? She sure can. She did good. Baked chicken, the breast part of the chicken, is normally a category one. But because she ate it out, we don't know what oils or fats they're cooking into that, so we treat it like a four. And since she didn't add any carbohydrate, category three or category five, she's safe. She had another ACV. What is this ACV doing for her? I suspect that she's done this throughout her journal quite a bit. Yeah. That this is also helping you why your weight loss has been significant because you're doing that and that's helping control insulin. That It's not mandatory, but it's helping control insulin. And then you had the approved recipe, crock pot, ranch, pork chop. And I assume it was the right portion, right, Karen? Y yes, it was. So beautiful. So she had one, two, three eating episodes. ACV and diet ocean spray is not classified as an eating episode. So beautiful job on that day. And Travis, on the ACV, I saw, because, you know, I'm new and I'm still learning, but I saw at the bottom of the journal there that, and that there's a box. So I realized I didn't really have to list it there. I could check that box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I'm glad you listed it, though, because I probably wouldn't have noticed it to remind people that it does help. Yeah. And for those of you, and I'm not trying to tell on myself, I've been very transparent and open. I never had any, had never had drank an alcoholic beverage. Uh, an adult beverage until I was 40 years old. And then after back surgery, I lost everything I had, lost my health insurance, yada, yada, yada. So I made the excuse. I started drinking a little wine and then it got to be a lot of wine. And I would do that every day. I became enslaved by it. And for those of you that secretly are battling that, one of the things that saved my, I don't need no wine to get high. <laughs> All I got to do is go in my prayer closet and I come out high. <laughs> So our, our pain relief or whatever. But for those of you that secretly deal with that, one of the things I do is take a wine glass and at night I'll mix up ocean spray diet and ACV 
and I feel like I'm having, you know, my, my little adult beverage, even though it's just controlling my insulin. Just, just a thought for some of you. Now, Karen, here, I'm going to have to get on to you. Yep. <laughs> I don't get to get on to her very much. So <laughs> this, what, what do we want to do on that holiday? We want to unpack, and, and it could be this simple. I work hard and I play hard. It was date night and me and the hubby wanted to go out and we wanted to enjoy uh, whatever we want to have cheesecake. We want to have whatever we wanted. So we had a holiday, but writing that down will really help you. And yeah. if it was something that was a snack accident or an accident coming up with what's good about it, it tastes good. That's what's good about it. What's bad about it. I felt miserable for hours thereafter. And what's funny about it? Well, the next day I sit on the toilet for two hours, whatever. If you'll think about what's good about it, what's bad about it, what's funny about it, that is actually not a Travisism. That is Wellness Coaching 101, helping people think through good behaviors and bad behaviors. What's good about it, bad about it, funny about it. I will tell you on these holidays, and, and I knew, you know, I did not, I just simply didn't journal on those holidays, um, but I had heartburn. Yes. Every day I had a holiday. And then that Monday when I got back on track on the, yeah, it, I didn't have any, by the end of the day, I had not, I didn't have any heartburn. And let me ask you this. Now that I see this Monday, you marked the warrior spirit day, by the way, let me jump out of this information. Michelle asked how much ACV do you use? I use an ounce. How much did you use Karen? I just use one tablespoon. Cause it's pretty strong. I couldn't, I couldn't handle two tablespoons or an ounce. I did one. Good, good job. And that's enough. You know, you did yeah. that twice in a day. That That's good. Another type of day that it will help you is on a holiday because anytime you can control insulin, even though you had you had too much insulin in your bloodstream, less insulin is still math. So that apple cider vinegar has been shown time and time again and proved that it, it re helps regulate blood sugar. So warrior spirit, that's a challenge day. So you had three holidays in a row leading up to this day. Was you thinking because Monday I'm starting the challenge, so I'm going to get it out of my system? Yes, I did. Because I thought I don't, and I, my intention was not to have a holiday for the first 10 days. Um, and then I had that, that Monday, um, we went to Pico Deli and I was going to get my baked chicken. They didn't have any. So I had, you know, I had an accidental holiday. But yeah, that's why I did the holidays because I knew that I was getting ready to start the challenge. I didn't want to have a holiday for 10 days and I hadn't had one so far, you know, since I'd started. So I just, I kind of went a little crazy. <laughs> you did good. Let me make sure I forgot about our folks on Facebook. Let me make sure there ain't no questions. Nope. We're good. Hey guys on Facebook. Sorry about that. I had my, I had my uh, phone that I watched Facebook with. I had it set to Karen's results, <laughs> so I had to switch to Facebook. Um, Sally, on Zoom, when you do a wow challenge, is that marked as a warrior spirit? No, that's a wow, a wow challenge, Sally. That's a wow challenge. So hopefully you know how to set up a wow challenge, and then once you complete that daily challenge, it shows up as W-O-W, -W, War on Weakness. We're declare that's something I come up with years ago for myself to make – the program new uh, from she uh, Sally's asking, can I show that? Let, let me get through Karen's journal. And then with the remaining time, if you'll remind me, cause I can't find my pen to write. If you'll remind me, I'll show you how to set up a wow challenge, but you got to find ways all the time. It's just your relationship with food. I have found for me is just like a relationship with your, your partner in life. Like my wife and I, uh, I learned from my mistakes in my first marriage. It's very important. Uh, like we have a rule. We never talk down to each other. Uh, we don't even cut up that way because in my first marriage, we cut up like that. And when you do get in a fight, then all of a sudden the way you cut up becomes serious. So we're very, you know, we're and another thing that we do is we always try to keep our relationship adventurous and exciting and go new, do new things, et cetera. Your food and your relationship with it is the same. So when I get bored with my Shibola program, I just make it new again. I'll go do some wow challenges or I'll go do like we're doing the 24 day masterclass. Uh, I'll spend 
uh, Karen, we've been, you and my mom and, and myself, we've been on Fitbit together. And if you noticed when you first got on Fitbit, I was walking 20, 30,000 steps a day. And now all of a sudden I'm not, it's because I'm, I'm engaged in another type of activity. Mm -hmm. I want to keep things spiced up all the time. So yeah. with wow challenges, if you get bored, those are quirky, weird challenges that y'all can do for a day to get yourself yourself back interested. So what kind of day are you having here? Warrior Spirit, because it's the 24-day master class. You had the AdvoCare fiber packet with, uh, is that Ocean Spray Diet? Right, the Diet Ocean Spray. Oh, diet, that's actually how you say it. Diet Ocean Spray. Uh, great job there. So that fiber helps control our insulin. Have, I don't know if you've noticed, but for me, it helps with appetite control. Yeah. And it helps with regularity. Then you did the ACV and the Diet OS. And then your first meal, a turkey approved tortilla, lettuce, which is what I'm having after this session, turkey <laughs> approved tortilla, lettuce, spinach, a little bit of mustard. So you had a one turkey breast as category one. You had your tortilla category two. And then you put some condiments on there. Beautiful exercise on a plate. You had spark. Spark is supposed to and does for me. Helps with energy and mental, uh, mental clarity and focus. Anytime you're operating in a calorie deficit, sometimes your mental energy can lack. That helps with that. Uh, another ACV and diet. Spaghetti. The Travis's spaghetti. Actually, bless her heart, that's my mama's recipe. <laughs> But when it got put in there, it got put in as Travis. But, well, maybe it is Travis because she wouldn't have edamame pasta. <laughs> but uh, Travis spaghetti with – is that edamame pasta? Is that soy yes. pasta? Yep. And there's several different pastas that y'all all can use to replace the pasta in that recipe. Explore Cuisine, Fiber Gourmet, uh, even spaghetti squash. Then you have the AdvoCare meal replacement shake. So this is, again, textbook. You had one, two, three eating episodes. And this is why you're doing so good. That whole day, y'all, she controlled her calories and finished that day in a calorie deficit. That's the only way that you can get at those stored calories and exhaust them. She did it more efficiently. She could have lost weight with just the calorie intake. However, she's doing it much more efficiently because she controlled insulin. That's, that is so key. Good job. Next day, Warrior Spirit, we're having our fiber pack, grilled salmon. Oh, I love, we've got pictures this time. Beautiful portion. Oh, you're making me hungry. She's got the, the, my, yeah, my internet's a little sketchy at home, so sometimes the pictures don't want to download. That's why the pictures are kind of hitting this. Now, that's actually a meal out. We went to Okinawa, and I didn't eat the brown rice. I just had the veggies and the salmon. Great, great. I'm so glad you said it was at Okinawa so we can unpack this because I love that place. Yes. So when you go in there, for me, you know what's going to trigger me? Rice and yum-yum sauce. Yeah. Right. So here you went and you had the salmon and the veggies. Did did you feel deprived that you had to miss out on the rice and yum yum sauce or? No, no, I didn't. In fact, that is half. Wayne and I split that. We got like the teriyaki salmon and told him to leave the teriyaki sauce off because he can't have it because he's diabetic. But you get two pieces of salmon and we got double veggies and then he ate part of the brown rice. And so that's like half of a meal. <laughs> Yeah, and another thing you're doing right is you, you called it a four. Like if I yeah. had done that at home on my grill mm -hmm. or in my pan, I could have turned it into a one. But it didn't matter. You're at an, a restaurant. You know it's cooked in long-chain triglyceride fats. You have nothing here on this plate that's going to spike insulin. So you're not going to have any stored fat because your portion is small. But this is great. It's fantastic. And the way I look at that, when the, the rice and stuff triggers me, that's a problem for me. may not be for you, Karen, but I just love that rice. Yeah, I do so too. What I do on a perfect day, I simply walk myself through my little mental flow chart. If I just have the salmon and veggies or the shrimp and scallops and veggies, am I going to enjoy that? 
Yes. Will I enjoy the knowledge that I'm going to lose body fat after that meal? Yes. If I have the rice and yum yum sauce, am I going to enjoy that? Yes. Am I going to enjoy the fact that I gain weight because of that? No. So two yeses is better than a yes, no. It's just exactly you walking yourself through it and not eating unawarely. So then unstuffed cabbage rolls, beautiful recipe, one of my favorite. And a Mighty Muffin, three eating episodes. This is pr- terrific. You controlled insulin with every single meal. Had your fiber pack. No wonder you're nailing it. This is awesome. Making me very hungry. Next day, Warrior Spirit got a fiber pack, grilled chicken, MCT dressing, a ribeye and broccoli at Texas Roadhouse. So no bread or nothing there, Karen? No, no sir. Good job. Delicious. And here, was it just two meals that day? It was. I was going to have a snack later and I'm doing, you know, 16 hour fast as part of that 24 day challenge. And I didn't get it in before seven. So I couldn't have it. Perfect. And this, because you, if you had had three eating episodes on this day, here's where the math uh, is, it's good for optimization because you had a steak. That's much higher in calories than chicken breast. If you had had a third eating episode on this day, I suspect it would have been more of a maintaining day, which is fine. That's part of the process. Right. It would have been a perfect day. But because you only had the two eating episodes, this is great. You're in a calorie deficit. You're controlling insulin. Okay. That's good to know for future. I do two meals now, and especially as lean as you're getting. Um. I, I eat two meals a day and I'm, I'm a big guy, six foot three, 200, well, 190 something now, but two, two meals, I'm satisfied. I get plenty of protein in those two meals, but if I want a third, I can have it. Uh, fiber packet, turkey, lettuce, spinach, tortilla. Ooh, I love that. It looks good. <laughs> Salmon, shrimp, and Brussels sprouts, beautiful portion. And here she had, uh, was this at home? It was. I had gotten the, um, you know, the salmon was approved recipe in our challenge. And that was like, I had one salmon, pat- two, I think was a serving, but I had one salmon patty and then finished my protein up with shrimp. Good deal. Awesome. Had our Mighty Muffin, three eating episodes. Each I love my Mighty one. Muffin. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. Great job. Fantastic. Hope y'all are taking down some of these meal ideas. Fiber packet, baked chicken and green beans, turnip greens looks delicious. Is that the Piccadilly again? It is. That's Piccadilly. I, I thought it looked like that. <laughs> yep. Half, half a cup of cabbage soup, one salmon patty and Brussels. I didn't get the whole picture. It, it just, like I said, because I have so much trouble downloading the picture, so I just did a picture of the soup that day. Well, you also did something that I do see people mess up on, and you didn't. So you had the salmon patty, Brussels sprouts, but you backed down on your portion of cabbage soup. You had yes. a little less of that. You made an adjustment because you wanted that salmon patty, too. Yeah. <laughs> so good job there. Perfect. Perfect. Fiber packet, salmon salad with MCT. Good. Look at that portion, everybody. Perfect. Turkey approved tortilla. And that's the other thing. When you have these meals and you stop eating, you're satisfied then. But if you'll notice 15 to 20 minutes later, you're full. Mm-hmm. If we just stop a little earlier, eat our portion and you think, well, I could eat more. That's the wrong thing to say to yourself. I can eat more. We're not supposed to eat until we stretch our stomach. If you give your your stomach time to talk to your brain, when you're eating portions this size, she's eating good portions, in 15 to 30 minutes, you're going to realize I'm actually full, not just satisfied. That's a lot of food to put in our stomach in its natural state, killing it. And the other thing, everybody, so – when she had the salmon and asparagus, do you know how long it takes to fully digest that meal, Karen? 
Mm-mm, no. For, for for the remnants of it to also be gone, approximately twenty four to thirty six hours. Wow. So if when we're eating the way we're eating, when people tell me they're starving to death, this is why I, I lose my brain because <laughs> you cannot be starving to death when you can have three eating episodes and this one nor this one. Let's see, she had two on this. I just had two. Neither one of these was even fully digested by the next morning. So how in that same day can you be starving to death? You follow me, Karen? Yeah, it's it's a mental thing, isn't it? It is. It's well, you know, with with this challenge, and you know, people that haven't done the the warrior spirit thing, yeah, you, know, you have that sixteen hour fast as part of it. And um, I I'm surprised at how well I've done with a sixteen hour fast. I thought I'll be like you said, I'll be starving to death, but I wasn't. <laughs> now, have you noticed your cognitive ability be better with I less think food? I, I do. Yes, I really do. Yeah. Exactly. Fasting has been shown over and over. A uh, 16-hour daily fast has been able to imp- uh, improve uh, even in folks who are um, have age-related cognitive decline. Yeah, It's been proven to help offset that, just fasting. So you've got fiber packet, I, and I was sitting there, I was sitting there thinking that that has been an issue in my family. It runs in the family. And I'm glad that I've started fasting at an early, early age because I really believe in it. And I'm not talking about everybody going without food for indefinite periods of time. We tend to all be extremists. I've got somebody right now that was just wanting to do a water fast for a week. I'm not doing it. Good luck. I'll pray <laughs> for you. I admire you. But uh, I, no, all I got to do to get the same benefits is a 16 hour fast daily. And that's going to begin to stack up much better than doing one water fast and never fasting again would do. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you got turkey, lettuce, spinach, mustard, approved tortilla, grilled chicken breast, cauliflower, a mighty muffin, another three perfect eating episodes. B Brooks is asking, so is the fiber packet aiding in her weight loss or is this for her body getting rid of waste? Both. Um, The fiber packet helps with regularity. It helps with, uh, now we're doing it as a part of a cleanse. Right. Uh, but it helps with, reg- it's not mandatory, helps with regularity. Uh, it helps remove undigested waste from your, from your uh, digestive system. Uh, and it helps with appetite control. So good stuff. There's somebody else that asked something. I know how you set it up and commit to it. Market completed. I didn't know when you journal what to mark in the drop down menu it marks it for you if i'm not mistaken sally we'll go double check because there could have been a development change sasha and sergey work on stuff all the time and i'll just have to go look with you in a moment all right let me go next one fiber packet chicken and dressing Holiday. That was holiday. Yeah, yeah, that was, I didn't want it to be. <laughs> Is there a way though to have chicken and dressing that's approved? Not at the picket deli, but <laughs> at home, <laughs> at home. Now I do have to say most recipes that I found a void replacement for, I like them as good as the real thing or better, but the dressing recipe it's good, but it, it don't match my mom's dressing. So sometimes yeah. you just got to have some dressing. Well, it was either dressing or fried, something fried at Pico, and I just was not going, I didn't want the fried. And you had that holiday meal. Now I can't get this little box to, uh, I can't get the box. It says cauliflower crust pizza with something, pepperoni. Was that a holiday yes. meal too? Yeah, that, well, since I had messed up at lunch, I thought, I've been wanting some pizza, so we just, yeah, I got the cauliflower crust pizza, but I did have pepperoni, yes. Awesome, awesome. So you marked to the holiday, and then we're going to get back in the saddle. Right. Warrior Spirit Day, fiber pack, grilled salmon. Oh, Okinawa again. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Beef Mexican skillet with fiber gourmet, everything crackers. That looks delicious. Good yeah, job. It was good. So – you, you, did you do this strategically? You had that holiday. 
So was you trying to make up for it? Because I see two eating episodes only. I, no, I wasn't. I think it was just accident or probably something happening. I didn't get my, because of the 16 hour fast, you know, if I can't get my snack in by seven, then I just have to skip it. So it, was, it must have been one of those kind of days. Yeah. And you know what, Karen, this don't look like diet food. It looks like delicious <laughs> everyday food. Exactly. And it was good. Oh, it's so good. That's why I said I don't feel deprived. And you're, you're mixing it up nice, too. Smart choice here. Smart yeah. choice. And that's Waffle House right there, folks. Isn't that the yeah. Waffle House? Yeah, it sure is. Mm -hmm. You had egg scrambled egg whites and a pork chop. Yeah. I'm going to screenshot this one. I had, I'm going to the Waffle House. Yes. I'm, I'm screenshotting that one for me. And I've actually had that several times since I've been on this program. So you can still lose weight and eat at Waffle House, folks. <laughs> Outstanding. Then grilled shrimp, stir fry cabbage and carrots and butternut squash. Beautiful portion. Was that at home? It was. Yeah, I guess so. MCT oil. And then your mighty muffin. Beautiful job. Goodness. This is this is awesome. You definitely don't look like a beginner in your journal. Ah, uh, well. So how, how <laughs> did you how did you absorb all this so quick? I mean, because you've got a lot of variety here. Tell them again Gail. what you did. Gail. Mom, I, got my mom. My best, I got my dear friend Gail to help me. And I did fast track. Fast you know, track. Yeah. Done fast track. You need to, folks, because there's so much good information. And um, yeah, Gail was she has been a huge part of my success. I, I couldn't have done it without her help. But she feels the same about you. It, it's good <laughs> to have a I call it around here battle buddy. It's good to have yes. a battle buddy. She's a good battle buddy. <laughs> Smoked chicken toss salad. Good. Crock pot pork chops. Rice cauliflower. What do you think about rice cauliflower? Had you eaten that before? I had eaten it before and I love it. And it's good like with this um, pork chop recipe because, you know, you pour a little bit of that soup on there and, you yeah, know, it, you don't feel like you're cheating. I mean, you don't feel like you're deprived. Now, I know somebody's going to disagree with this, but Sauce and I talk about it all the time. So we eat tons of rice cauliflower with yum yum <laughs> sauce on it at home. Uh -huh. We have our own stir fry and we, we treat it like we went to Okinawa. What is the <laughs> difference? I mean, it tastes right. as good as rice, but it's nutrient it dense. Yeah. I, I can't tell any difference. I like it. And it doesn't taste like cauliflower. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like cauliflower, but it doesn't taste like cauliflower to me. Oh, it just absorbs the flavor. It's a texture thing like rice. Rice yeah. has no flavor. It just yeah. absorbs the flavors of what it's prepared with. Yeah. Beautiful day. You've given me so many ideas for oh, myself. Good. Tortilla again, just something quick, some butternut squash. Good. Grilled butternut chicken. squash is one of my favorites now. Now, here's one. I bet. Okay. So grilled chicken, broccoli, and carrots at Cracker Barrel. So gra Cracker Barrel is a problem for a lot of people. So you had the grilled chicken, which would be a four. The broccoli, that's a two. Did you just use carrots more as a condiment portion or did you have a large I, portion? I didn't know. I, they gave me the whole order and I ate half of it. I gave the other half to Wayne. Yeah. Okay. So I would probably count that as a condiment. Oh, if, okay. If you have a full portion of carrots, that's a category three and we wouldn't want to have a four and a three. But it, but a couple of nuances about carrots and onions. Carrots and onions are a category three. If you have more than a quarter cup of them and they're cooked, they have to count as a category three full portion. If you have less than a quarter cup and they're not cooked, then uh, they can be a freebie. If you have less than a quarter cup and they're cooked, then it would be a condiment. Does that make sense? That does. See, that's the kind of thing I'm still a little confused on, yeah, because I'm I'm just haven't been doing it long enough. So thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, like if I had carrots and a potato are in the same category. So if I had had a potato, then that would have caught been a problem because I can't have a four and a three. Okay. But you you lucked out there. I still can't catch you on anything because it was carrots. <laughs> So as long as your portion was really controlled, it's yeah. not a problem. We'll just call yeah, that a condiment. And then Mighty Muffin Cookies, those things are so good. Oh, they are. Yeah, good job there. Mm. 
baked chicken, broccoli, green beans. So you had a four. Uh, it's a one, but you put rightly put a four, so a four and a two because you eat that out, right? Right. That was a pickle deli. <laughs> you got me wanting to go there too. I haven't <laughs> been there in years. Canned crab meat and butternut squash. Great job. That's creative. Canned crab meat, I usually put a little lemon juice, Old Bay seasoning, some ghee butter for those of you that are interested in that. How did you do yours, Karen? I just ate it out of the can because, you know, on that challenge, I wasn't sure what I could put on it, and I didn't want to take time to, like, research it, so I just ate it. I didn't prefer that out of the can, though. Um, I used to eat the imitation, and I know that's not, a, you know, not all of them's approved, so... Um, and with the challenge, I just thought, well, I'm going to try this. But I, I didn't care for the can that much. Let me help everybody out on that. Uh, my wife loves imitation, imitation crab. And uh, I think y'all are sinning when y'all eat imitation <laughs> But it is approved. Uh, you can have imitation crab. It's really minced fi fish. with uh, so, But what happens is they, inject, they infuse starch in it to hold it together. Oh. But it's still high enough in protein value that you neutralize the starch, but it's just not as good for you as the real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now what you did here was great. And just a fun thing for everybody. If you like the advanced health systems fettuccine, I take that same canned crab, that canned crab meat, of course, rinse it, drain it. And I put it in my uh, AHS fettuccine and it is delicious. It's like crab fettuccine. So, wow. yeah, you, you just slayed it. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone do as good. It's awesome. You've got <laughs> ham on a fruit tortilla, tomato, spinach, mustard, turkey, lettuce, spinach on a tortilla, mighty muffin. Now, one of the things I would say not to criticize, but just to find <laughs> something to talk about, optimizing your, your – as you get closer to gold, Karen – Watch the bread. Okay. So when you start feeling like you are hitting a plateau, it's mm -hmm. most likely if you're still doing everything pretty much the same, it's likely going to be the bread. Okay. Bye, Janice. Good to have you. And then that's today. All right. Yeah. Wow. Good job. <laughs> Let's see. Thanks, Le Thanks for doing that, Travis. Oh, thank you. No, thank you. That's not, these are the kind I wish we could have somebody volunteer that every day because it helps us all. Um, when carrots are cooked, the sugar comes out. Is that why they are better raw? Yeah, when a, a carrot or an onion is pre digested, you've already went through part of the digestion process, which is called cooking. Cooking helps. Uh, soften, helps our body digest foods better. And they emit a lot of sugar when they're cooked. And that can elevate your blood sugar some. Uh, it's really not a pronounced thing that you got to worry about. But we're looking at, uh, it's all about math to me. So I'm looking at the course of a week. So anytime you have an increase in insulin levels, and then you do a little something wrong every day, they start stacking because they have a half, insulin has what you call a half-life. So once you spike insulin, it don't start really diminishing for about 24 hours and it takes about two days to get insulin levels back down enough so that you can efficiently lose fat. So if I'm doing something a little wrong every day and then I'm doing something real big wrong, then I'm keeping insulin levels higher than I would if I was really spot on. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Andrea is asking about juiced carrots. I don't like to see people with a goal of weight loss juicing at all, ever, never. So that's just my philosophy because you're doing a lot of the digestive work for your digestive system. Now, I suspect there's times where you're dealing with a cancer patient or something like that, that somebody can make a case for juicing. Uh, I still can't make one myself. Because to say you absorb the nutrients better, yeah, you're also going to absorb the sugar better. And sugar feeds cancer. So I'm just not sure why we would ever want to juice anything unless you're sick and you need your digestive system needs to help with the juicing. When we eat whole foods, raw, cooked, 
whatever. When we eat whole foods, we get more blood flow to the digestive system. The more we juice something, the less blood flow we're getting to the digestive system. That's just my take on it. Everybody has a different philosophy when it comes to juicing. Uh, let's see, any other? If I missed a question, I'm sorry. Before we dismiss today, a couple of more things, and then I'll let y'all go, and I'll stay uh, over time, and we'll work on the wow challenge thing for those of you that want to. But, uh, Karen, thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Any parting advice or words of wisdom for the folks that are here? Just, you know, keep your focus and, and give it to God. Good job. Marie says, is the Mighty Muffin counted as a meal, meal replacement if you eat a whole one and half if it's a snack? Uh, Mighty Muffins are that, that thing that is uh, it's on the, it's on the line. Right. So for myself, I usually will count it as a meal, but there's nothing wrong with counting a Mighty Muffin as a snack. For those of you that want to count it as a snack, that's not a problem. Just remember when you start having four eating episodes in a day and the closer you get to your goal, the more of a slowdown you're going to see. So for me, I just count it. Uh, I will count it as a snack if I have only had two meals. Like, for example, Let's say that um, let's say that for lunch I have this sandwich I'm about to have, and then for dinner I have some shrimp and green beans. But I want a dessert, then I'll have a mighty muffin and call it a snack. If I add anything to it, like peanut butter or sugar-free chocolate chips, definitely a meal. But it didn't look like Karen was adding anything to it, no. and it, it, it's right on that 200 calorie line, so not a big deal. Sanders says, I have seen ACV in capsule form. Is that okay? Uh, it's not as good. Uh, it's better than no ACV, but the capsules aren't as good as the liquid ACV with the good bacteria, the live active cultures in it. Yeah, Tammy says snacks are 200 calories or less. That normally holds true for everything, but with everything in Shibboleth, there's these outliers, right? So a Mighty Muffin prebiotics, probiotics, right at the 200 calories, sometimes a little over 200 calories, but it's so high in protein. If you want to count that as a snack, it's not a problem. I would just suggest, though, that when you want to really tighten up, that you count it as a meal episode the closer you get to go. Does that make sense, Tammy? All right. Karen, you're such a blessing. Uh, thank you for being not only a lifetime member, but a partner. You've done way too much. You probably didn't want us to tell anybody that, but nope. <laughs> you've done way too much, way too much. And well, I love you, your family, Sasha. I just, you know, y'all are really special to me. Well, you are to us. And I, I mean this, y'all. It Without our partners, without our lifetime members, I wouldn't stop doing what I'm doing. I get too much credit because – I would not be able to help but 20, 30 people a day without my team. But because we've got a team, we can help 200, 300 people a day. And that's because of our partners, like Patricia, like Karen, like all of our great folks who have felt led to help. And, and Karen, you've just helped in a marvelous way again because mm -hmm. you've shared your journey. And mm -hmm. that's going to help. How many of y'all are motivated because of Karen's journey? Some of y'all <laughs> motivated? I hope it helps somebody. Yes, they're saying yes. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much, Karen. I'm yeah. going to help these folks with a wow challenge and yeah. let me know if I can be of service to you. All You're right. Blessed. Love y'all, Travis. Love you. <laughs> Good job, everybody. That was awesome. All right. We're going to look at wow challenges. Let me get that pulled up. I forget who asked the question. Who asked the question? So I, sorry, I got, that'll keep me from scrolling back up. I need to log out of Karen's and log into mine. Bear with me. All right. Sally, all right. 
So Sally, let's take a look. Let's say that I'm going to pick out a wow challenge. And resources, challenges, wow challenges. And I look through for everybody that – Sally's pretty much got this down, but I'm going to go on and address it like for people who don't have it down. So I'm looking for a wow challenge. And let's say that I find one that looks interesting, bio coffee. Let me see what this one's about. It says bio coffee number eight. Uh, so it says do not eat breakfast. Okay. Lunch, bio coffee mixed with cocoa ring, a health wise hot chocolate. You can have this with one mighty muffin. And then dinner is my spaghetti recipe. So I look at that and I go, you know what? I can do this. I can do anything for one day. So I'm going to accept this wow challenge. And I'm going to accept it for today, March the 28th. It's now accepted. So when I go to my journal, make sure I accepted that. I've already accepted it. Good. So I go to my journal. And when I go into challenges, I should see that I'm doing the bio coffee number eight uh, challenge. Number eight. So I'm in here and it says uncompleted. It's not complete. So I'm going to pretend that I'm finishing it up. And then I click I completed it. I earned my wow badge. And now let me go look, see how it shows up in my weekly calendar. Here, here it is. See this right here where it says wow? So you wouldn't have to mark that day. It's already marked for you. Does that make sense, Sally? Awesome. So that's it. That's nothing to it. And what that does, they're quirky and they're fun. And it's meant to be, you can do anything for, for one day that you set your mind to. And you'll be surprised at how often you've lost momentum and you can get it back with only one perfect day, like a wow challenge. Awesome, Sally. Yeah, they're fun now, and they're meant to be quirky now. You'll see some ridiculous ones, but what I've done is plan out the calories. I've made them silly and fun and challenging. Uh, it's a self-discipline challenge. I've planned out the calories and I've ensured you get enough, whoever you are, you get enough protein in that one day and you can do them as many as you want. So awesome. Any other questions before we go today? I got a, uh, Marie says, I got a new set of digital scales. They're about three to four pounds different. So I posted in my journal. Good job. Anybody else? Hey, it's okay. You'll get that right off, Marie. Just a change in the scales. Nothing changed. And most scales are liars anyway. They only tell the truth if you look at them month over month. Anybody else? If I missed anything or overlooked anyone, it's never intentional. Tammy, when we have a, a hol holiday, does that make the whole day as – oh, a meal? Does that make the whole day as a holiday when logging? Yes. So if I even lick the cheese dust off a of Dorito, it's a holiday or a hollow meal. So one hollow meal still means you had a holiday, but – you'll get back in EFB much faster in reality. Holla meals are always preferred over an entire holiday, but it's just one day of your journey. So, How often should you weigh yourself? That's a personal thing. I weigh myself many times every single day, but I'm not one that's easily discouraged over weight fluctuations. I'm more entertained by it. 
if you get down real easy and you quit real easy over the scales going up a few pounds or not moving, then you shouldn't weigh but once a week. And the best day to weigh for most people is Wednesday because most people take their holidays on the weekend. And then by Wednesday, they can see more. Uh, they'll, they'll, that water and sugar will be removed and they won't get as discouraged if they had a, 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 high, a, a rowdy weekend. Uh, but I weigh many times every single day. Not sure on Tammy, you might have to expand. It may just be my brain not connecting. So MMIMF. Uh, no, any, when we, you said hol, holiness, you probably got Jesus on your mind too. I think well, the way that reads, when we have a hollow meal, is that right? Does that make the whole day a holiday when logging instead of a Tiger 16? It would. Anytime, even if we only had, 50 calories all day, and that 50 calories was a Twinkie, a part of a Twinkie. It's still a, that whole day becomes a holiday, even though you still would lose weight. We just want to rightly define when we do something that's outside the standard, that's a holiday. Gotcha. That's my philosophy. You got to, I want you to remember y'all, some of the stuff that I've addressed in the program, it's not so much a biological or physiological thing. It's a behavioral thing. Okay. It's a, it's a behavioral, um, just like licking the cheese dust off a of Dorito is not a holiday biologically or physiologically, but how many of you can, Lick one Dorito and stop, right? After the lick goes the crunch, after the crunch goes the back. Same thing with a Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuit. Uh, we, my stepdaughter will chew them up, spit them out. Is she having a holiday? I tell her yes, but she says no because it's not impacting my blood sugar. She's right. But how many people can chew up a Cheddar Bay Biscuit and then spit it out? So it's a, I wish that were cold or hot, but they are lukewarm. So if I, let me, let me give you my philosophy. Has anybody ever read that in the Bible? There's like, I forget the actual number of verses that speak uh, well of alcohol, but it's like 300 and something. And then there's like 200 and something verses that speak very negatively of it because some people can be enslaved by it. And a drunk should not even look at red wine when it stirs in the cup. Now, if, if what is it saying that a drunk is sinning if he looks at wine? No. It's saying that he may, though. Do y'all follow me? Do y'all follow my philosophy when it comes to food? And we do. We take it one day at a time. One day at a time. Perfect day or holiday. All right, y'all. I'm about to head out. I got to go meet now. The fun stuff's over. We need y'all's prayers. I'm going to meet with our attorney uh, about our 501c3 status. So y'all pray for us. All that stuff's over our head and we got a lot more work to do to get that done. And I'm going to meet with unfun stuff, but I look forward to connecting with y'all the rest of the week. Uh, I'll be back with you every weekday. Uh, and also Tuesday night and Thursday night, I'll be with my master class. So love y'all and we'll talk to you again in our next meetings. God bless you.